Hey, what is up guys? This is Zach Designs here. Welcome back to another tutorial or how-to video here today. This is basically going to be how to basically create a free Minecraft server with the Oracle Cloud infrastructure for absolutely free. Now keep in mind it is a $1 charge with a credit or debit card, but that is all that it charges further. I have been using the serv service for free. Now I wish I did know this before purchasing many Minecraft servers in the past, but let's go ahead and get into this. So first you wanna go ahead and create a account on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, like I stated here. And then you wanna go down below. And then once you go here, you wanna create a VM instance. Once you create the VM instance, you wanna go ahead and go through. And then you can name it, of course, for the instance name, if you would like. Image and shape, you wanna edit. You wanna change this from Oracle Linux to Canical Ubuntu. And that's going to be an always free eligible. Make sure it says always free eligible. Then on this, you want to go to AMPERE -E Ampere, and then VM standard A1 flex, and then four OCPU 24 gigs. And that's a lot versus if you go to any host or service host that provides a pay, pay by service or a monthly service, this is a well enough amount and plus you also get a i believe 50 to 250 gigabytes of storage space on an hdd drive besides the 24 gigabytes of memory and then you want to download your private key use transit encryption and then if you are new you want to create a new virtual cloud network and then create if you've already done this in the past and are just updating then you want to select existing cloud virtual network and press create so once you're done with that you're going to create and then you're going to go through the steps with your instances where the instance is going to be provisioning over here to the left. It's going to be getting starting up. And then once it says running, you're going to be ready to go. Now we want to go over here to the subnet. Now stuff you see right now is blurred out because I'm blurring it out because this is actually one of the servers I'm testing out. Um, now this one is going to only have two uh, or sorry, two OCPUs because uh, it is limited in my area with the 24 gigabytes of RAM. Then this is going to be above your public IP address. It's going to be blurred out on your screen, but that's going to be your IP address to connect to your server, your username. And then right here is a subnet max that we want to go into. And then you want to go to default security list and then add ingress rules. And I've already added them, but wait, basically what you're going to do is 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 .0 and then 25565, which is your port. And then you want to do that again for UDP, 0.0.0.0/025565. And that's going to be for your ports to your Minecraft server. Already have them added as we see here. And we'll go back, go to the beginning, and then we're all ready to go. All right, so now what you guys want to go ahead and do after you go back to this page here, after the subnet mask is what you want to do is download down below is going to be Termius. Termius is going to be your next service that you want to be using. I do understand their SFTP protocol service is pay to use. So you guys can absolutely use FileZilla and I will go ahead and provide a tutorial as well on how to use the FileZilla SSH protocols and everything like that. So you guys can connect and edit the uh, files and add plugins and things like that and then add permissions for, for that sort. And I'll add those down below as well. But let's go ahead and get this on Terminal or on Termius. Termius is absolutely amazing. You don't need to actually add any permissions when going through the SFTP. Uh, it's very, very useful and I, I love it. So what you wanna basically do is add a new host, label it, add the address, which is gonna be your IP address. You wanna add the 22 port, which is the default port. Your username, which is Ubuntu, which is default. And then your, uh, sorry, keys right here. And then you wanna add a key right here at the bottom and then file. And then after that, you add the file, you save it, you're all good to go. So now let's go ahead and connect. It will connect and have it added. If you guys wanna basically connect, it will provide you guys a little area or button that you have to click to basically allow access, which is just a simple thing. And you guys wanna click yes. So let's go ahead and get into this basically first. What we want to do is protect from logging out because that is one of the biggest things and keys right now that a lot of people are having with their Ubuntu or Ubuntu access is losing that 
SSH key. I will put a little screenshot or snippet on the screen right now to show you guys what I'm talking about. But that is basically the error that we have been seeing a lot. So what I want to go ahead and do is provide you guys an area on how to safely not have that error and not have the error where you're locked out. So what we want to basically do is set up some permissions and passwords. So what your password first you want to do, I'm going to look over here so we can get that. And that's going to be sudo password root. And then you want to type your new password and I'm going to set mine right now. And you can't see it at all. It won't show up. So you want to make sure you have it correct. It will ask you to retype the password and then your password has been updated successfully. And then you want to do sudo password Ubuntu for your Ubuntu root as well. And then type, you could type the same password as well, actually. All right, so now that you have updated the passwords, you're all good to go. So now if you guys do have an issue when you guys lose that public key access, you guys can go ahead and set up through a console connection, a VNC, which is a virtual network connection throughout a virtual software or VM software to where you'll be able to go ahead and connect and update your SHH key. And I'll leave a link down below. If you guys do have those errors, you guys will be able to go ahead and connect and do all that. So now what we want to go ahead and do is um, install Java. So what we want to go ahead and do is go to sudo s. So we're in our root. Now we want to go ahead and add these commands, which I'm just going to add for you guys. You want to add the repository first, add enter, and then we'll get back to you once this is finished and done. So now it's done downloading. What we want to go ahead and do is now install Java. So now we're going to be installing Java. Um, looks like we already have it to apt install firewall. Now we want to install the firewall. That's going to be installing our firewall so we can go ahead and start adding our ports and TCPs. So it looks like it was already added. Now let's add this one, already enabled. And then we will add one more. All right, perfect. Now we'll do firewall command reload, success. And then now we want to, so we're going to install area two, which is going to be a more efficient downloading service for your uh, terminal. So let's go ahead and get that downloaded. And we are all good now. Finally finished. And then now in order for us to, or now we'll create that directory, which is going to be the MKDIR. And then whatever you guys want to call it, I'm going to call it ZDS. And then now that we're in that directory, we want to go ahead and go to cd home slash ubuntu slash zds, which is the, or the folder that you created. You want to go ahead and access that. And then we want to go to area 2c and then from c to io. Yep. And then download copy link. Now that we have the copied link, we just copy it right there. And now we're all good. So now what we want to go ahead and do is start the server and to start the server, we want to go ahead and go over here and start our server. So now, so now that we have area 2C downloaded and now that we have the paper downloaded, what we want to go ahead and do is run the server. So in order for us to run the server, we want to copy this name. You can usually control shift C to copy this or just write it down on your notepad and copy it with this command. Now with this command, I'm actually going to turn the screen or take the screen off because we don't need to basically have another screen run right now. We just need to continue the code in line of line of commands. So what, what it's doing right now is downloading the vanilla jar, patching it, hosting it, and then it's going to make everything download and then have us fail to load the nano or sorry, the EULA. So now what we want to do is type nano EULA.txt. Now we can go into the EULA and freely edit this as we speak and change it to true control X or sorry, control X Y enter. And so that makes us save that nano or that EULA text and make it true. So now what we can do is start the server one more time by entering the same line that we entered previously. 
and now it will start up so what we can do is load up Minecraft and connect to the server here real quick and I will get with you when we connect to the server so for your IP address for your Minecraft server in order for you to connect that's going to be the same IP address that is here for your public IP address and you're just going to copy and paste that into your Minecraft server area which I'll show you guys here as well so let's go to Minecraft add server add the one that we have and it's fully connected so now we can connect and we're fully in so now we're all set everything works perfectly I can break blocks I can build everything works perfect so there is to edit any files you just go to the SFTP select the host of the SFTP that you're going to be editing and or making any changes to and you connect to that you have no issues going through this plugins and adding any plugins that you want I will show you guys those select host and we'll go to my other server right here and we'll log in go to my plugins we can see that we have our oxen protocol and everything like that installed here with Termius now you guys don't have to use Termius like I stated for you guys to go ahead and use the SFTP if you guys don't want to use a, free, a premium edition what you can do is go to FileZilla go here do your host Ubuntu at your IP address right and then file or sorry edit settings SFTP add key and then add your public key that you downloaded from the Oracle instance in the beginning and you save the private key and you save the file that private key is the main access in order for you to connect to anything on here on your servers for Termius, FileZilla and etc. This is excluding PuTTY which I think was main, the main issue and causing error for us getting locked out but even if you are locked out with PuTTY and still want to use PuTTY you can set that password like I did in the beginning of the tutorial where you can go ahead and allow some access it to a VNC virtual software or virtual uh, machine so you can go ahead and connect and fix your SSH key through that VNC connection so if you guys did enjoy please like subscribe comment and share I'll go ahead and see you guys in the next video this was an amazing video I loved creating this tutorial I was getting errors left and right with people having errors with their Minecraft servers getting logged out with putty and just having many errors especially when you went to go ahead and edit files or did anything like that this is going to go ahead and help you I'm also going to leave you guys a command there below that's also going to help you out with setting permissions to your FileZilla files so you guys can go ahead and edit you guys can also download the files directly with the area to see on your uh, Termius panel and you can go ahead and use the area to see link in the plugins area and download that plugin directly now for updating plugins and things like that you will have to unfortunately do it through FileZilla or the Termius SFTP. But anyways guys if you guys did like subscribe comment and share I'll see you guys in the next video. I don't know what you want. Let's have a bit of fun till I downfall.